Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Charity, and I want to welcome you to our church's online experience this week. As we begin the new year, I want to hear about something you're excited about beginning and something you're glad to end. Go ahead and post it in the chat below. I know for me, I'm just looking forward to 2020 being done. You know, just mentally moving on from what the craziness of this year has been. And I'm going to start the Read a Bible in a Year plan. I'm really looking forward to being forced to read the entire Bible uh, for all it's worth this year. Hey, if this is your first time joining in with us today, The Well is a church in Nashua, New Hampshire that cares deeply about our city and about helping our friends and neighbors know and follow Jesus. No matter where you are on your journey of faith, we want you to know that you belong here with us and that you matter to God. Wherever you're watching from too, we want to encourage you all to engage with us this morning. Like this video, share it with your friends, like our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And feel free to comment in the chat and engage with the message through our message notes. Right now at The Well, we're meeting online only, but we so look forward to getting back together as soon as it's safe. While we're online, we want to get connected with you, so we encourage you to fill out a DCC. You can access our digital connection card through the link in today's description. These cards are specific to each message and have spiritual next steps you can take today. And we know many of you are having a hard time this season, so please let us know how we can pray for you on that connection card. As we begin the year, we want to remind you that we will complete our special offering called Restore Our World at the end of this month. You've already been so generous and we've already been able to make a big impact. In fact, we're already over 50% towards our goal. For more on this unique opportunity, check out this video. 2020 has been a year unlike any other that we've experienced. None of us expected a global pandemic and all its relational health and economic fallout. It's truly demanded a lot of us and left none of us untouched by its challenges. But as followers of Jesus, there's much reason to hope because we trust in a God who's larger than our circumstances and who's never backed down from a challenge. He's the master of redeeming even the worst of circumstances, proving through the cross and resurrection that nothing is too far gone for his ability and desire to rescue. Our hope in times like these can be articulated as Paul put it in the book of Romans, God works in all things for the good of those who love him. In the midst of tragedy, God's offering us an invitation to participate with him to restore our world. We believe that God has great plans to do nothing less than transform lives in New Hampshire and beyond with the hope of Jesus. But it's gonna take a radically unselfish group of people willing to sacrifice and show God's love in tangible, practical ways to see our world restored. That's why I'm excited to introduce you to our Restore Our World special offering. This special offering has a God-sized goal of $15,500 to support four vital ministry initiatives that will help us impact our church family, Southern New Hampshire, and even our world in 2021. We're asking you to give to the special offering above and beyond your normal tithes and giving because we believe that God wants to do something incredible in our church and through our church in 2021. Our four initiatives are restore our mission, restore our community, restore our message, and restore our church family. As we seek to restore our mission, we believe healthy mission will multiply. Though our church launched only four years ago, our vision has always been to see all of New Hampshire transformed by starting more life-giving churches. In fact, our national network of over 40,000 churches has recently identified us, The Well, as the hub from which all future New Hampshire church startups will be trained and sent. A portion of our Restore Our World offering will go to supporting these church startups in New Hampshire, as well as to many more in national and international startups through our network's cooperative program, designed to support 3,000 plus North American missionaries and 5,000 plus international missionaries. We also deeply care about the needs in our local community. As we seek to restore our community, we want to come alongside families in need and partner with local organizations who make a real difference. By providing things like school supplies, food, and other essentials, we've been able to share the love of Jesus with hundreds of people in tangible ways. Your Restore Our World giving will continue to help us share God's love in these tangible ways in a way that will direct hearts towards Jesus. Though many of our previous ways of building bridges relationally in our community have not been what they were prior to the pandemic, we've still been able to share the gospel with arguably even more as we've extended the gospel to hundreds online on a weekly basis. As we seek to restore our message, we want to expand our online reach through our live stream and social media presence, as well as the health and quality of our in-person gatherings so many more will encounter Jesus. 
Finally, we know that the needs in our church family will only grow in this pandemic. So as we seek to restore our church family, we want to challenge our church to be there for each other like never before. That's why we're asking our church family to contribute generously to this Restore Our World offering to set up a benevolence fund to help meet tangible needs in our own church family. As Jesus put it, the world will know that we belong to him by the way we love each other. When you give to this Restore Our World special offering, you're investing in something greater than yourself and you're believing with us that God can use our church to impact so many lives for Jesus Christ. So will you pray and ask God how he wants you to give to the Restore Our World special offering? Let God challenge you to give above and beyond your normal giving so that together we can reach this God-sized goal of $15,500 and fund these four vital ministry initiatives. For us, this really is a God-sized goal and it's gonna take all of us working together to be able to reach it. So whether you can contribute a large amount to help take care of a chunk of this goal or whether you wanna give smaller amounts each week, that little bit added together will make a big difference. But here's the thing, there's no greater return on investment than when you and I invest in changing lives for Jesus Christ. Let's not forget that we love each other and our world because God loved us first. So as we get ready for 2021, let's ask God to use us like never before so that we can impact our church, Southern New Hampshire, and our world for Jesus. If you haven't given yet, why wait? It's going to take all of us to reach this God-sized goal of $15,500, so let's reach it together. You can click the link below to give today. Well, again, so glad you're with us today, and as we all embrace a fresh start for 2021, we're gonna talk about what it takes to actually live a fresh start, what we want to begin, and what we need to end to get there. But before we do, would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for the opportunity to hear your word. Thank you for being faithful to us, for being always present, and that your mercies, God, are new each and every morning. We don't need to look to a new year for that. We can look to you each and every day. Thank you for your forgiveness in Jesus. Thank you for the um, privilege it is to know you and to love you. Would you bless this time as we hear your word preached in your name, amen. Let's hear from Pastor Scott. Happy New Year to you. Really excited that you're with us today. My name is Scott Kearney. I'm the lead pastor here at The Well, and welcome to 2021. This is our first Sunday in the year, and uh, we're just really excited that you're with us, whether you're watching uh, locally, nationally, or globally. Glad you are with us today. We want you to see yourself really as a part of our church family today. Uh, Well, I don't know if you're with me, but uh, I'm stoked that 2021 is here and that 2020 is now in our rear view window. Anybody else with me? Give me some love on that. Yeah, it was a tough year for so many of us. The isolation, the pandemic, uh, the political tensions, all that kind of stuff. Man, it was tough. It was tough to go through all of that. And yet here we are in 2021. Now, if you're like me, uh, you're both hopeful, but also uneasy at the same time, because it's not necessarily like 2021 rolls around and everything's different, right? It's not. We're still in this, uh, and it's going to take a little while, but we have a vaccine coming, so there's hope in it. But here's what we all really need. Whether the conditions outside of us change or not, all of us, all of us need a fresh start. All of us need a fresh start. And I think that's what we're aching for, right? I mean, if you're if you're honest with yourself, and if, if I'm honest with myself, I mean, we all need a fresh start. We want to experience that that experience of like a, you know, a clean slate, you know, things beginning a new fresh start. That's really what a lot of us are, are aching for. Uh, but to have a fresh start has a prior condition. And this is what we're going to talk about today. To actually experience a fresh start means that we need to leave the baggage in the past. We're going to talk about how to make a clean break with some of the things that are actually holding us back from experiencing a fresh start. Uh, You cannot start something new unless you also end something. Let me put it this way, okay? For for a lot of us, you just finished the holidays, and like we talk about every year, you had too much sweets, right? Uh, Beginning with Halloween, getting into Thanksgiving and the Christmas season. I mean, the sugar 
the sugar monster is nuts, okay? And I'll wave the white flag on that one too. It's crazy. Uh, and so we get into the new year and every one of us, we're like, I'm gonna get in better shape, right? I'm gonna eat healthier, I'm gonna be healthier. But you can't just work out and you can't just eat healthy and expect to be healthy unless you also do something else, right? You also have to stop eating unhealthy. You also have to stop being lazy, right? You, to, to start something new, to start something fresh, you also have to end something that needs to be ended, okay? It's the same thing with our spending habits. You know, we, we, we get into the new year after spending so much around the Christmas time and we think to ourselves, you know, this is the year that I'm gonna nail my budget. This year, I'm gonna get healthy spending habits and you're never going to have a bank account that increases, that gets better and have a fresh start with your, your finances unless you also end some of your unhealthy spending habits, really. That's what it's all about. And so today, as we experience a fresh start, which I believe that God wants for all of us, I believe that. Some of you have given up on goals uh, and ambitions for you know each year that it rolls around. You're just like, well, it's gonna be the same as it was last year, and you know why set new ambitions? Uh, I really wanna challenge you on that one because I believe that God has new ambitions. He's got new goals for every single one of us. Don't give up on it just because you haven't experienced it. Maybe you haven't gone at it the right way. I believe that God wants to do something new. He wants a fresh start for every single one of us on this uh, on this, this call today. So, so he, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about a fresh start, but we're also going to talk about it and its necessity of also including necessary endings. So here's where we're going to go. Jesus uh, actually had an incredibly important word for uh, his disciples right before he left them and went back into heaven, okay? A really important word. And uh, we know that it was important because these were his last words before he died. And every time uh, you uh, lean into somebody who's about to die and they give you their last will and testament or whatever words they're about to say, you carry a certain weight with them, right? Well, Jesus tells them something in this moment in John chapter 15 about how important it is to not just experience a fresh start, but to have necessary endings, okay? So John 15, chapter 15, starting in verse 1, here's where we go. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. That pruning concept is going to be critical for us as we move forward here, so hang on to that. He continues and says, You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So here's the first thing that God's inviting us to in this moment. Jesus is inviting us to be honest about your dependence on God's resources. Be honest about your dependence on God's resource. The imagery here is an incredibly rich one, okay? Jesus is describing the natural process that God takes to actually pour his life, his kingdom, life-changing resources into us. He, it, God is, is telling us that he's got life, real life, that's actually going to transform you and transform the lives of other people around you, uh, but he's describing how that actually takes place. He want, And here's the first thing that you have to believe. He wants you to be full of life, Regardless of what your circumstances are, right? He wants you to be full of life, experiencing the fullness of hope, the fullness of peace, the fullness of joy, no matter what. He wants that fullness of life inside of you right now. You have to believe that. And the second thing is he wants you to be life-giving. He wants you to be full of life, but he also wants to be life-giving everywhere you go. And that is possible. Even if your circumstances are really hard, it is so possible. And Jesus is saying, this is how you have to learn how to receive that life-giving uh, power that only Jesus has, and then you have to learn how to give that life-giving power to others around you. And the imagery here is, is of a vine and branches, okay? And, and what he's saying is that no branch, which is us, that's, that's what we're represented as, no branch can actually bear fruit. To, to be full of life and life-giving, you cannot bear fruit if you're disconnected from the one true source that's actually going to give those resources to you. It's really simple, right? But it's rich imagery. It's rich imagery because God is saying that his 
his fuel, his life, the, the nutrients that we need to be full of life and life giving, they come from him. And we've got to be honest but about the fact that God alone is the one who gives that to us. God is alone. And there's something offensive about that, isn't there? There's something offensive about this. Jesus is saying that apart from God, apart from building your life on God, and apart from having faith in him, your life is dead and useless. We don't like that. That's incredibly offensive language, but that is part and parcel to all of this. And again, I'm not a botanist, okay? I'm, you know, far from it. But the whole process here uh, is something that botanists call xylem and phloem. It's the nutrients inside of a branch, a flower, a tree, uh, of, of nutrients going up, nutrients going down, sugars, protein proteins, organic molecules that are necessary for life to take place. And Jesus is saying, you, you remove that resource, that xylem and phloem that's going up and down, you remove that and it's dead. It's dead. Some of you know this really well, right? Your Christmas trees. How many of you got a real Christmas tree? Not the fake stuff, not the fake stuff. How many of you got a real Christmas tree and within 24 hours it died? right? How many like struggled to, to let it keep having water? We actually cut our tree down this year and it lasted almost the whole time, but there was a point at which the water uh, was no longer soaking up any of the nutrients, right? As soon as it was cut off from the roots, you know what happens. It starts the process of dying. And Jesus is saying, just like that Christmas tree that's been cut off of the roots, we don't have any full of life experience or life-giving nutrients unless we're allowing Jesus to come inside of us. Now, you, 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 might, you might be saying, wait, wait, I don't know about that, Scott. Like, I know plenty of Christians, number one, who are not life-giving and who are not full of life, who've been angry, nasty, hate-filled, all that in this season. And I know plenty of, of people who would not identify themselves as Christians who are really sweet, life-giving, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and let me just say, I'm with you. I believe that. But here's what I also want to acknowledge, and we can't get into this in, a, in a, any depth of way, but but we were, we were created. We were created. We are not accidents of chaos uh, that kind of just got hurled into space and are colliding with each other. And some of you, maybe you're atheist or, or you're agnostic on this call. And I, I just want you to challenge your doubts for a second, okay? Because what you believe about the world doesn't usually function within that worldview, okay? Even just the fact that we love beauty and we love to look at things for the sake of uh, its own beauty, not because it's functional to us, not because it helps us survive in the survival of the fittest, not because of natural selection, but just because it is beautiful, you know, that's, that cries out for a artist, a creator who's made things beautiful. The fact that you have a right and a wrong system in, in the inside of you that naturally says there are certain categorical things that are right and some, some certain categorical things that are wrong, that's inside of you. It's written inside of you. And it's not just because it helps you survive, right? Uh, you know, we, we look at the, the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. Um, you know, we, we say that what they did uh, was categorically wrong. Why? Because there's a moral code on the inside of them. Now they could argue, look, we were just trying to further the Aryan race and get ourselves in a better place and collectively, societally, you know, all together actually try to eliminate weaker species so that we could survive. But we say, no, that's categorically evil because there's something on the inside of you that God gave there. And look, if these things are inside of us because of a God who made this world and designed you that way, then why would we, why would we ever come to the conclusion that we can survive and thrive without him. You can't. Now, just like the Christmas tree, you might look great on the outside. You might have the twinkling lights and all of the ornaments uh, and everything, and it looks really great on the outside. And we're like, wow, that tree is full of life. In the same way, if you don't know Jesus and you don't have that faith, man, you might give off that aura of, of great for a while that you're, you're nice and clean and pretty and all that on the outside. But until you get honest about the fact that the core of who you are, the ache inside your soul can only be satisfied by the creator of the universe who loves you and has put that moral code, who's put beauty, who's put real love at the core of your existence. Until you acknowledge that, you're never going to experience the kingdom life that will last forever, eternal life that will flow inside of you and out of you 
into the lives of other people. That's what Jesus is talking about here. And, you know, just to acknowledge the fact that some Christians don't live this way, just because you claim to be a Christian does not mean that you actually are. And that's one of the brutal facts that we have to come to in this passage. I mean, what did Jesus say, right? He said, I'm the, I'm the true vine and my father's the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. You know, when Gandhi said, I love your Jesus, I just don't like your Christians. I think in some ways what he was doing is he's acknowledging the fact that there are some people who claim to be Christians, but truly are not because they bear no fruit. They don't look anything like Jesus, okay? And we, we just have to get really honest about that, that all of us are dependent upon the life-giving creator of the universe to pour his nutrients up and down into our life in order for us to be full of life and to be life-giving. And, but in that, in that is a recognition. We are limited. We are human beings, and by ourselves, we are limited. Here's just a few of the limitations, you ready? You are limited in your body and what you can physically do. You are limited in your mind. Your IQ can only go so far. You are limited in your gift set, in your knowledge set, in your personalities, in even the family of origin that you came from. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose your socioeconomic origins. Your education like, is great, but it has a limit to it. You can't know everything. Your career limits you. Your season of life and responsibilities, any moms and dads in the room. You are limited. You are limited. You are limited. And we might see limitation as a huge downside. But here's what Peter Cesaro says. He says, we find God's will for our lives in our limitations. Why? It draws us back to God so that we can actually access resources that go way beyond our limits. Only God can do that in your life. Okay. So here's the first thing that I want you to write down. Ready? In order to do this, we have to embrace the law of pruning. You have to embrace the law of pruning. God has a goal for your life. Did you catch what that was in John 15? God wants you, again, to be full of life and life-giving. He wants you to bear fruit, but it's not going to come without a process. And what's that process? Man, it involves pain right? It involves pain. He said, he cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he does what? He prunes. So that'll be even more fruitful. Anyone ever try to, you know, uh, or maybe had an apple tree in your backyard growing up, or maybe in your yard right now, and you wonder why that tree doesn't produce the kind of apples that you get at apple farms, you know, I mean, here in New Hampshire, we have these beautiful apple farms in the fall, and they produce these unbelievable apples. There's rich, big, I mean, juicy. It is so great. But some of you, man, you might have a, a tree in your yard, and it's like the, the little apples, right? They're tiny, and they don't taste as good. You think, well, why? One reason. Pruning. Pruning. This is, this is the law of pruning, ready? Pruning is all about cutting off what is either sick and unhealthy in the tree, or dead and taking up space um, so that we can redirect those resources to the branches that are actually alive and producing fruit. Otherwise, uh, you know, the tree is limited too. It can only spend so much of its time, energy, and resources across the whole tree. And if it's giving it to branches that are sick or branches that are dead or certain things in there, it's going to take away from all of the resources that can go into the healthy branches. This is what Jesus is saying. He says, you are limited. You have only so much time and energy and resources, and you've got to redirect those in a way that's actually going to produce life on the inside of you and be life-giving to other people inside of you. So uh, Henry Cloud wrote a book called Necessary Endings. Okay, We've already referenced that title before, but in Necessary Endings, he talks about the growth process. And in order to get to a place of really being uh, fruitful in your life. He says there are three barriers to growth that you've got to identify and get past in order to get all of your resources to lead you to the place of maximum potential, fulfilling that maximum potential. Think about a tree, right? Fulfilling its potential to be as fruitful as possible. And here are the three things that he says. It's all within the pruning analogy here. Number one, you have got to stop resourcing what's good so that you can fuel what's best. You got to stop resourcing what's good so that you can resource what is best. Uh, you've got to stop resourcing what's unhealthy or sick and not getting better. And then three, uh, you've got to stop resourcing what's dead and just taking up space. Okay. 
uh, as Jim Collins said, good is the enemy of great. We have got to stop uh, giving so much time and energy to some things that are just good, but they're not great, okay? <laughs> Look, uh, I've, I've had to take a, a good honest assessment with me, even just in my pastoral ministry. I've learned in this pandemic that I'm pretty good at video editing. I, I have a vision of, you know, how to put videos together and, and put them together in a way that is creative, you know, that's artistic and people enjoy. But I feel like God's been telling me, look, your job as a pastor is not to create videos as good as they are. And, and we've got to create, we've got to keep creating these, but it's your best your best resources, as, as we follow Ephesians chapter 4, is actually to equip the saints for the work of ministry, to, to pour into people in your church that are good branches so that they can produce fruit and multiply and multiply and multiply. Create a chain of multiplication. That's the best that I need to give myself to. And, you know, here's just a, just a quick plug in. Maybe some of you, you got a desire for video editing. Maybe you've got some skills in creative stuff. I want you to talk to me, okay? Because we're building that team right now. And as we build that team, I can pour some resources into you so that you can multiply that. But we can't, we can't do this if all of this is going to be on me. We just can't. So we need more people in this so that I can continue to pour into other people and multiply them for the sake of the kingdom. Good is the enemy of great. And I've got to get to a place in my life uh, where I believe that. But here's maybe where some, some of those other places Places are for you. I was reading a book uh, called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I've, I've mentioned it so many times, John Mark Comer, but he says in one point something that I remembered uh, when thinking about how we've got to eliminate good so we can actually get to great, okay? He said this, what if, what if we gave ourselves to good things, but not the best things, okay? Watch this. What if you started a business, but you ended a marriage? What if your kids got into the dream college but you never taught them the way of Jesus? What if you've got letters after your name, but no wisdom? What if you grew wealthy, but not in the things that mattered most, you know, generosity and actually transforming lives? What if you watched all 14 seasons of you fill in the blank, but never developed a prayer life? Guys, is it possible that you've given yourself to some things that are good, cleaning your yard, maintaining your house, but not the things that are best? You are limited you have limited time, energy, and resources. It is time to pour them into the things that matter most, okay? You've got to prune. Jesus wants to prune you so that you can be even more fruitful, okay? The whole reason we're doing this, 2020, I think, was an exposing year. I think it was a pruning year. But we're never going to get to full fruitfulness in our life unless we embrace the law of pruning. <clears throat> now, here's some unhealthy things, okay? Some branches in a tree, they're unhealthy, They've got termites in them. They've got some blockages on the inside of them. And no matter how many resources you try to pour into that branch, it's sick and not getting better. You, only, you do only one thing with that. You cut it off. Look, for some of us, the people that you have surrounded yourself with are just unhealthy people. And no matter how much you try to influence them or change them, they are unhealthy. And you've got to redirect your resources to people who are healthy and spend time with them so that you can actually reach your maximum potential and become the kind of person God has called you to be. For some of you, your spending habits and the way you spend money is incredibly unhealthy. We, we, we might reason, no, like credit cards are a good thing. They help me build up credit. Yeah, but not the way you're using it. And your trajectory right now is, is really painful. And for some of you, you can't just try to, you know, to, to, to try to use your credit card the right way. It has become so unhealthy for you that you've literally got to cut that off and start over without any credit cards, okay? Some things you just need to quit. For some of us, you know, it's devices, iPhones, iPads, screens, computer screens. And you think, man, like these aren't bad in of themselves. I agree. But what it's done to your life has gotten so unhealthy. Maybe you've got an addiction to pornography or an addiction to entertainment and it has wasted your life. I mean, thousands and thousands of hours of video games are consuming young men's lives in particular, even women. And it is sick, it is unhealthy, and no matter how much you try to make it healthy, it's not going to be. And for some of you, you've got to put some massive boundaries on your screens or maybe even get rid of them right now. What's sick and unhealthy and not getting better? That's the second one. And some things are simply just taking up space. They're dead. And they're taking up space and you got to get rid of them. For some of you, that's all the stuff that you own. It is a weight around your ankles and it is holding you 
back. Maybe you've got some things that are incredibly expensive in your life and it's got you know a ton of time to maintain and keep and it is preventing you from pouring resources into God's kingdom and, and <clears throat> time and energy of spending it with other people so you can build into them and then build into you for kingdom purposes. For some of you, some of that deadness is the anger and the hate and the unforgiveness on, on the inside of your soul and you've got to stop that. You've got to cut that off so that you can get to the place where you are actually life-giving. How do you embrace the love of pruning? Guys, maybe some of you, you need some coaching in this. And I just wanna offer this right now as your pastor. If you need some coaching on this, go ahead and pull out that DCC. There's gonna be a checkbox in there that says, man, I need some coaching. I need some coaching to know who I am and who I'm becoming, who Christ has made me to be. And then I also need help trying to think about how to eliminate certain things in my life that are holding me back. If that's you, I just want you, I want you to know, I want to come alongside you. Pastor Chris and I, we're going to come alongside you and we're going to help you identify those things so that you can live fully into who Christ has made you to be. Well, what's the greatest motivator that's actually going to get us to this place? It's not that you just want to wish 2020 away and get 2021 into a, a place where you experience a fresh start. No, no. The ultimate motivator is realizing what Jesus did for you. This is what is so beautiful about this, okay? Jesus said, I am the true vine. I am that one. And just as God said he's going to prune us to make us more fruitful, guess who is pruned for us? Jesus was literally cut off. He was cut off an eternal relationship that he had with the Father from all the beginning of time when he was up on the cross and he died a death in our place. In that moment, God turned his back on his son and cut him off so that we who were cut off and dead could actually experience that resurrection, that newness, that forgiveness that we so desperately need. Jesus was cut off so that you could be included in the branch and forever reign as a beautiful, fruitful vine. But there's only one way to access that. You have to trust him. And you have to hand your life over to him. He's inviting you to take all of his nutrients and resources, but it's not going to come if you're still in the driver's seat of your life. You have to surrender. But you don't surrender to anyone or an abstract God. You surrender to a God who loves you, who came into this world and died in your place, being cut off so that you could be included and grafted back in. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you want this fullness of life and you want to be life-giving for everybody else around you, but you've never actually accessed the eternal life that God so freely offers us. I'm going to lead you in a prayer and all of us in a prayer as we embrace this law of pruning and become the kind of people that God has called us to be. So would you pray with me? Jesus, we want to acknowledge that for as difficult as the circumstances are on the outside of us, the real problem is on the inside of us. We've got some selfishness. We've got some sin, some anger, some unforgiveness that has perhaps got God led us to the place where we are sick and not getting better or dead and in need of a resurrection. Father God, we acknowledge that and we confess that before you. And we acknowledge, God, that we need your forgiveness and we need your life on the inside of us. We can't do that on our own. We're dependent on you. So, God, I pray that today as we trust you, that you'd pour your peace and pour your hope into us, that we'd experience a fresh fullness of life like never before. And you'd help us today to embrace that law of pruning by saying no to the things that have held us back and have cut us off from you and say, I am going to live for Jesus today, moving forward. We embrace you. We follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, so glad you guys joined us today. Thank you for being a part of this. Again, if you need coaching, Pastor Chris and I would love to come alongside you. So go ahead and fill out that DCC and help us know how to best contact you so that we can help you eliminate what you need to eliminate and help you position yourself so that you can receive the nutrients. 
that Jesus wants to give you. I'm going to hand it back over to our host, but next week we're actually going to finish this brief mini-series on a fresh start. Um, And what we're going to do is we're going to identify in this passage, John 15, not just what we need to eliminate, but who is Jesus making you to be? Because sometimes we don't know what to eliminate until we understand who he's making us to be. So stay tuned. Until then, have a great week. We'll see you next time. So what do you need to end today? Don't let today go by without writing a few things down. I want to invite you also to join us in giving generously as so many of you have already been. Your generosity really makes a difference and plays a part in transforming people's lives in the name of Jesus. You can give online at thewellnh.org slash give where you can give a one-time gift or automate your giving. You can also give via text by texting the dollar sign and amount to 843-21. If you want to give towards the special offering, Restore Our World, you can specify that when you give. Remember the cost Jesus has already paid for you to experience a true, fresh start and one that will result in abundant joy and lasting impact. Join us next Sunday as we conclude what it means to experience a fresh start. And until then, have a great week. Bye guys.